Welcome back to the Highlight Spill. Uh, this is the week four preview. Uh, we haven't had one since week one. Uh, I've been under the weather. I'm just now starting to feel better. Uh, my partner, James, he, he's under the weather right now. So I'm, I'm hitting this one solo dolo. Uh, well, let's take off. We're going to review the players of the week from last week. The three players that I figure showed the best performance. Uh, number one, I had Dwayne Haskins, uh, quarterback from Ohio State. Uh, they beat TCU 40-28. to He had 344 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, so that's a pretty big game for them. The second person I had was David Blow, Purdue's quarterback. They lost to Missouri 40-37, to but he had 572 yards and four total touchdowns. So that's a pretty big day for him and a, and a losing effort. Uh, third, I have... Alan Bowman, from the quarterback from Texas Tech, they beat Houston 63-49. to He had 605 yards, five touchdowns, so he had an even bigger game. Granted, uh, Houston, it's not a, you know, a, a good defense at all, but uh, maybe that'll get Texas Tech rolling and keep him in and not play their quarterbacks they did have. All right, now we're going to get into the teams of the week from last week. Me. My first team I had was BYU. I mean, they look something special going into Wisconsin and knocking them off 24-21. Uh, they only had like a 6.9% chance to win. Came in there, did what they had to do, and came out victorious. So big ups to BYU. Uh, second, I have LSU. Uh, they beat number seven Auburn 22-21, to last second field goal. So think about it, in three weeks, that's two top 15 teams LSU has beat. Could LSU be back? Possibly so. Uh, and then the third team I had was, uh, nope, I don't think anybody's seen this one coming, uh, North Texas. Uh, they beat Arkansas 44-17, to and their defense, they had six interceptions on their quarterback. I think it was like three different quarterbacks that went in, uh, six interceptions total. They didn't look good at all. Now that we're done reviewing week three, uh, we're going to preview week four. <laughs> we got some good games coming up uh, this week. Uh, starting it off on Friday, September 21st at 7, uh, Florida Atlantic travels to number 16 UCF to take on them. Uh, it should be a, maybe a good game, maybe a little high scoring, but I think UCF has got too much firepower for Florida Atlantic. Uh, watch for McKenzie Milton to do big things. Um, and then Saturday, September 22nd, we got at 12 o'clock, number two, Georgia. Uh, Traveling to Missouri to take on the Tigers. Uh, I think Georgia's going to pull away. I mean, it's going to be some good quarterback play with Drew Locke and you know Jake Fromm, but Georgia's defense is too powerful, and I think their offense is going to be too much. Uh, at 3:30, we got number two, 22 Texas A&M traveling to number one Alabama. Whew, that's going to be a good one too, but. I just think Alabama's got a good thing with uh, Tungoa Valoa going on. And, uh, you know, their defense is always powerful, so Alabama's going to pull away with that one. And then at 4.30, we got number 17, TCU, traveling to Texas. Now, this one's going to be a little trap game for TCU, I feel like. They're just coming off the loss to Ohio State. I feel like they're going to get back on track, but Texas had a big game against USC last week, and I think – since it's at home, just like last week, they'll get it done. Texas upset in TCU. And then we got at 7 o'clock, uh, number 14, Mississippi State, traveling to Kentucky. Now, I know what everybody's thinking. Mississippi State should, you know, beat Kentucky. But I think this is a different Kentucky team. Their offense is looking good. Their defense is not looking too bad, but it's just not looking good either. But I think they'll – Get enough stops to stop Mississippi State and pull the upset. Kentucky in that one. Then at 8 o'clock, we got number 7 Stanford traveling to number 20 Oregon. Um, Bryce Love's going to be too much. The offensive line, uh, the quarterback will have too much time for Stanford. Uh, Stanford in a big one. Um, and then at 10.30, we got Arizona State traveling to number 10 Washington. Uh, Herm Edwards... Uh, they just finally lost this past week, but he might have them ready to play, but they're going into a road game. 
Jake Browning in Washington, and I feel like Washington's going to have too much power for him. I feel like Jake Browning's going to come out and ball, and he's going to tear their defense apart. Washington and Allen. Now, I told y'all all my picks. Uh, my partner, Burlington, he's not feeling good. He sent me a, a text with all his picks. His picks for the first game, he got UCF as well. Yeah. And then Georgia game, he has Georgia. And then he has Bama pulling it up against Texas A&M. But then he has TCU beating Texas. That's what we, we know. We don't got the same picks there. And then he has Mississippi State over top of Kentucky. Uh, we ain't agreeing on that one either. And then he's got Stanford over Oregon and Washington over Arizona State. So there's our week four picks in the game preview for week four. Now let's get started on the upset alert. Who I have on my upset alert? Number 19, Michigan. Um, I think Scott Frost will have Nebraska ready to go and play him. I mean, it took a while for Michigan to get going against SMU. Uh, when Shea Patterson got going, I mean, he looked good. But I think Scott Frost will have Nebraska's defense ready to shut him down. And Nebraska will be in a close one. So watch Michigan get upset this Saturday. All right, and now the X-Factors of the week. <laughs> Who I got as my X-Factor? I think it's going to be Texas's defense against number 17, TCU. Last week against number 22, USC, they shut them down. I mean, beat them bad. And I feel like if they have the same momentum leading over to this week like they did last week, it'll be a long day for TCU like it was last week against Ohio State. Uh, Texas's defense. All right, now we're going to talk about uh, the Heisman Watch. Who I have on my Heisman list, my top five picks. Number one, I got Tua Tungoa Valoa from Alabama. He's 36 of 50 for the season, 646 yards, eight touchdowns, zero picks. Uh, compared to the other quarterbacks I have on my list, he's not very statistically high with them, but he plays for number one Alabama, and they've scored 50 points in every game this year. And their offense is filthy. Their defense is filthy, so he ain't had to play uh, the, the whole the whole game. So that's that's why his statistics ain't as good as everybody else. But he's still my number one. And then number two, I got Kyler Murray. He jumped up out of nowhere for me. Uh, for the season, he's forty nine of seventy three, eight hundred sixty three yards, eight touchdowns, and a pick. And if you haven't watched him, you need to watch him. Man, he's something special. He he making Oklahoma look like they ain't even miss a beat. With, with, with Baker Mayfield being gone, and, and they looking like something special. They lost their running back for the season, and they've been having to use him a little more. And he been he ain't been shining down from him. He been doing his thing. Um, number three, another quarterback that shot up out of nowhere, Dwayne Haskins from Ohio State. Uh, he's 66 for 91 for the season, by 890 yards, 11 touchdowns, and a pick. Uh, he looking something serious. Nobody, I don't think anybody thought he would come out and do what he's done this season, especially with Urban Meyer being gone the first three games. Uh, I thought they would have a rocky start, uh, but they, they they haven't missed a beat either. Um, number four, I got uh, the running back from Wisconsin, Jonathan Taylor. Uh, for the season, he's got 77 carries, 515 yards, five touchdowns. Uh, for the first three games, that's pretty good. He's averaging over 100 a game, averaging over a touchdown a game. Uh, he keep it up, he can move up there quick. Uh, number five, I got Will Greer, quarterback from West Virginia. I took a week off this past week because of the cancellation of their game against NC State. Um, for the season, he's 46 of 60, 761 yards, nine touchdowns and a pick. Uh, he's doing his thing this year too. I feel like if they would have played against NC State, he'd be higher on my list. But since the cancellation, he dropped a little bit. All right, now let's talk about the playoffs. Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? There's the four teams I think from the first three weeks will be in the playoffs looking at it. I got Alabama number one. They're looking dominant as ever. Um, number two, I have Clemson. Their defensive line is filthy. And the two quarterback system they got is it's doing good for them. Trevor Lawrence is looking some filthy. And then number three, I got Ohio State. Dwayne Haskins and Dobbins, 
and all them have got them looking good. Their defense has stepped up. They just lost Nick Bosa. I don't know for how long, hopefully not long. Even if they did, their defense didn't look like it missed a beat without them against TCU. So Ohio State's number three. And number four, we're going to have two SCT, SEC teams in it like last year so far. I'm going to have LSU. They jumped pretty high on my rankings for the simple fact they they beat two top 15 teams. They, they beat Miami. Uh, Auburn was a close game, but they still pulled it out, found a way to win. They're 3-0. and uh, I think the Tigers might be back. Well, that's the week four preview of the Highlight Spill, brought to you by Trio 4 Productions. Cruz got his little Country Roads webcast out. Y'all need to go check it out if y'all haven't. I'm Fletch. Hopefully my partner James will be feeling better next week and we'll both be in here. But if not, I'll be back. This is the Highlight Spill brought to you by Trio 4 Productions. Thank you. <laughs>